Hello and welcome to another episode of Top Deck, the series where we take a look at some of the leading TCG deck lists. This time we've got Jacob Harbour's list, which took 5th place at the Irish Open, so this happened last weekend. And he was playing the S0 spamming uh, Pendulum Magician build. Uh, so we'll start off by running through the deck list itself, take a look at the siding strategy in the rounds, and then we'll bring on Jacob to have a chat about the deck. Uh, so we kick things off with Triple Curtain Razor. Uh, being able to put out an Electromite as quickly as possible, triple Astrograph obviously, triple Black Fang and triple Chronograph, triple Harmonizing, double Jackal King and triple Cerberus, so you've got that nice Mythical Beast engine in here, an extra Pendulum Summon, or an extra Pendulum Monster on the field, um, and potentially being able to banish something is pretty nice as well. Then triple Oath Dragon, uh, being able to add back harmonizing and also it's a six which is really important for the combo uh, and then triple purple poison helps you remove those problems that the deck does have uh, triple rescue hamster uh, I believe this was uh, in the last build that we saw from him um, so this brings out sort of your like double pendulum monsters um, then stargazer magician and timegazer magician as some essentially bricks I guess uh, triple wisdom eye Triple Allure, so that you can uh, modulate your hand until you get to a combo position. Uh, one Rank Up Magic Argent Chaos Force, you search this during the combo. One Star Pendulum Graph, and one Upstart Goblin. So I think this main deck is pretty much the same as what we saw before. There might have been uh, some small changes to the main, but otherwise, a uh, very consistent looking build and um, very similar to uh, what he's had success with before. Uh, for the extra deck, we have a Vortex, a Supreme Starving Venom, a Supreme Clearwing, a Dweller, a Beatrice, Nightmare, a Gaia, Utopia, Zaxor, one Lightning, um, an Absolute Dragon, double Electromite, one Underclock Taker, and one Zephyr Metaltron. Uh, so only two uh, Electromites here. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to be burning through these slightly faster. Um, we'll ask him about that. And then some of these uh, clearly flex slots, like definitely the the Lightning, the Nightmare, the Dweller, I guess potentially the Underclock Taker as well. Um, as for the side deck, triple Ash Blossom, triple Sphere Mode, triple Cyclone, triple D Barrier, and triple Evenly Matched. So for the siding strategy, uh, for this event, uh, when going against True Draco, you wouldn't change anything going first, you know, you set up Zexor and then you basically win. Um, for going second, he was putting in the Triple Ash, Triple Cyclone, and Triple Evenly. Um, so cards that you're pretty much guaranteed to be able to resolve, because they have so many draw cards, uh, they're always going to be setting something, um, and they tend to be setting more than one thing. So taking out the allures here, um, the I guess you don't want to draw into side cards and then have to discard them all as well. Um, if you were blind alluring and you don't want to be losing your combo pieces, so you don't want to be ditching a monster out of your hand that could be useful. Uh, dropping the upstart, the rank up magic, um, so you're not even going for the combo at this point, you're just going for classic pendulum shenanigans. Uh, and then dropping Oath Dragon, Star Pendulum, and double curtain razor. So it's not as important clearly to be able to set up that initial uh, Electromite before you get everything going outside of the standard way, uh, so you're dropping a few things that would go into that there. Uh, against the Adderall Magicians, so this is uh, Pendulum Magicians that set up like four negates in a single turn, uh, putting in triple barrier and taking out triple allure. Uh, basically that allows you to stun your opponent out of a turn, which is generally enough to be able to kill them, so that seems pretty reasonable. And then going second, Obviously they're going to set up a massive board, so uh, triple sphere mode, or triple evenly. Um, I guess this says if not good, I guess this is if your opponent is not good, um, or if sphere mode is not good. Uh, so taking out the rank up magic, uh, the Oath Dragon, the Star Pendulum, and then I think the three of is on top of that. Um, so against the FTK Magicians, um, when going first, exactly the same, you're setting up the three barriers because you just win if you take away the turn and can OTK them, and uh, so putting in three barriers, taking out the three alerts. Uh Going second, you just need to stop the combo, so putting in the hand traps, the ashes, basically. Um, for S0 Magicians, so in the mirror match, um, exactly the same first strategy, and for the second strategy, you want to stop a combo or you want to be able to out that board, so Sphere Mode is the other option being put in here. For 60 card variants, um, if it's the Light Swan build, um, then they're definitely going to be going into the extra deck, so putting in Triple Barrier and taking out the Triple low. If it's the Dino build, they can pretty much just sit on main deck monsters, so not bothering to put anything in for them. Uh, and then going second, obviously Ash, because you need to be able to deal with Grass and stuff like that. And uh, the Protoplan combo. For Trick Stars, uh, going first, putting in Triple Ash and a Cyclone. Uh, Cyclone helps you be able to out the back row, I guess, and the Ash is so that your opponent 
uh, is incapable of basically going off. Um, you have to be able to search in order to set up anything in Trickstar, so Ash in both first and second strategies here. Uh, adding in more Cyclones for going second, uh, so you can remove some of the back row that they're basically reliant on. Uh, and then also uh, he's got a side deck for random decks, so going first wouldn't change anything, however going second, um, if it's a deck that could be siding in anti-spell fragrance, then he'd be putting in cyclones um, and even leaves because you need a way to be able to deal with it. You don't want to just lose to your opponent drawing a single copy of anti-spell and you being un unable to play the game. Uh, and then you'd be taking out the, the rank of magic, the stump pendulum of dragon and triple alert, so just basically stuff that's less useful going second. Okay, so that's it for the siding strategy. For the rounds that Jacob played, round one he went up against BA and went 2-0. Round two against Zephyr he went 2-0. Round 3 against 42 card Light Sworn, bit of an odd variant, there's 2-0 there. Uh, round 4 against 60 cards, 2-1. Round 5 against Lair Infernoids, that's uh, an 0-2 there, bit unfortunate. Uh, round 6 against Dark Magicians, he went 2-0. And round 7 against Trickstar, he went 2-1. So uh, he's made a comment here, missing most of the good decks was pretty decent to be fair. And uh, yeah, he's managed to avoid any uh, True Draco, any Mech Knight Invoked but still facing down two Light Swan decks, and Lair Infernoids is definitely picking up popularity. Uh, it remains to be seen whether it's one of the best decks. I think one of the major issues is that um, you just don't tend to know um, what the deck is capable of because it's been out of the format for so long, so it's very hard to sort of prepare for it, uh, in a sense, and you, so you don't really know what they're going to be signing in against you, that sort of thing, which can make the, the matchup a bit more challenging. But he did face up against, uh, obviously, the Trickstar, and we said the, the Light Swarm builds as well. Um, and then BA, which is maybe a bit more of a spicy thing that you come across every now and again. Uh, so that's it for the rounds. Let's bring on Jacob to chat about the deck. Hi, Jacob. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good, thanks. How are you, Jeff? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, congratulations on getting 5th place at the Irish Open. Uh, first of all, how did you find the event? Um, I thought the event was really good, to be honest. It's my first time going to Dublin, so yeah. um, I just really enjoyed myself. And didn't sleep a lot, which is standard for me in the event, <laughs> but it was, it was run well. Um, the judges were really nice. Uh, I saw them deal with situations quite fairly, so like even if the policy guidelines would suggest that you kick out the kid who's running half a deck of versus two blue and lights. They sort of wavered a little bit. Um, <laughs> okay, sure. So, in general, it was just a really good event, to be honest. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we heard uh, from Cormac that um, apparently the people who slept the least did the best, so uh, <laughs> were you amongst them? <laughs> yeah, um, that, that's nearly true. Uh, Brad got two <laughs> more hours sleep than... Uh, Vlad, Cormac, and I. Ah, uh, okay. But equally, Tim Cox got 13, and Tim got like 5 hours of sleep more than the rest of us. So, you know. Yeah. you got to find that perfect balance. Yeah, right. exactly. It turns uh, okay. out that, for me, that's one hour. So. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, so, um... Just bring up the uh, the deck list itself. So the the main deck is very similar to the the list that we saw from you and from Luke beforehand. Um, yeah. I think this is more similar to. I think this is actually identical to his list, and whereas you ran a couple of things different. Um, yeah. But because it's so similar, um, what are the sort of what sort of things would you change with it in the future? Uh, okay, so the Star Pendulum Graph should be Janky Magician. Um, okay. Basically. Uh, Yankee Magician is like the really weird, uh, like level seven pendulum guy that never gets played. But um, yep. <laughs> in this scale, it's a scale three, and in the scale, it turns a face-up Ixie monster you control into an, uh, into an Ixie material for an Ixie summon using its rank if it were a level. Yeah. So what you do is you do Beatrice for the F zero combo. You make your Beatrice, send the rank up, make Gaia add the rank up, make um the guy into a level 7, for the purpose of overlaying yep. the last graph to make, um, absolute. Um, <laughs> and then with that's an nice. obviously that's Zephyr, that's Zephyr Metal and uh, Vortex. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that's uh, pretty that's cool. Like, <laughs> that, it, it's not to dines like every minute, right? Um, if you get that far. Um, it also, <laughs> yeah. it's also a big monster that negates Candina, uh, and Lily Bell <laughs> actually. <laughs> Yeah. Which is which, like hardly ever comes up. But occasionally, it's really really funny because you can just stick it against um, Trickstar, and then yeah. they ha they can't just like normal Candina. They have to um, <laughs> yeah. 
that's like really play around it because otherwise they just get like <laughs> they just get like stomped by this random <laughs> janky tar. But I tried to like the venue. No one had a copy. Uh, yeah. So I figured Star Benjamin Graff was like the least bad option. I was playing Monster Reborn at Huddersfield, and that card was trash. So <laughs> right, okay. I figured I would play something actually like good. Um, yeah. It came up like a couple of times. Obviously, like searching harmonizing magicians is really, really good. Uh, especially yeah. like blowing up Wisdom Eye, uh, setting like Black Fang, and then searching harmonizing is like crazy good. And then you basically yeah. have a copy of every game. So, yeah, outside of that, though, no, the list is standard. Uh, I wouldn't change any of those cards. They're all really, really good. Uh, the Pendulum yeah. Call, the Pendulum Call, like Dart Worm stuff, is like. <laughs> <laughs> The <laughs> call feels like really anti synergistic and the deck is already weak to Ash. Yeah. I, I don't I don't really want to make the deck more weak to Ash. Because like the build I have right now, like, it doesn't outright lose to Ash. And I'd rather just not change that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you don't want to end up in those pretty awkward scenarios where it's like, oh I've built a really strong deck if nothing happens. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, I've tested plenty of world challenges, man. I know what that feels like. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely the uh, prime example. Okay, cool. So if uh, if there's nothing else you change in the main then, apart from potentially adding in that janky for the uh, Star Pendulum Graph instead, uh, we may as well move on to the extra then. Alright, cool. So, um, looking at the extra, uh, mostly it's, um, I mean, fairly standard for what we see from the, the Pendulum S0 list. You've got, obviously, the, the combo pieces, the major uh, problem removals, and obviously, like, the Vortex Negate, things like that. Um, mm. So, I think, what well, at least uh, from my sort of cursory outside look on it, um, I think the kind of flex spots that you have, are, like, the, the Dweller... Um, the Lightning, although maybe because you're playing the Utopia build, you want to keep this in anyway. Um, and I guess the uh, Underclock could potentially be something else, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, yeah, you're right. Um, you missed Nightmare as well, which I don't think is oh, necessarily yeah, yeah. standard. Um, but yeah, the rest of that's like standard. So those, those yeah. four cards were the flex slots, and um, what it basically came down to is if I get Ashed on Beatrice, in which matchups, when I have two level fours on the board, what do I want to make? Yeah. Uh, and the best two cards to make are Dweller against Light True Draco, mm -hmm. um, and in most of the matchups, Nightmare. Um, yeah. Nightmare against Pendulum and Chin makes their life really awkward, <laughs> and yeah. in most situations, it means you don't die. You don't necessarily die do a lot to stop them making a board but you you won't like ever lose that turn uh well yeah. it's they have to draw the absolute nuts to like beat you <laughs> um and you can turn down like multiple standards and stuff uh they can obviously they can't make electromite if you start turning monsters down yeah um what they can do is make starving venom but if they're making starving venom in the actual uh, zone that's okay because they don't have link arrows so all their pendulum summoning is from the hand yeah and so it that's... Also, uh, it's not the sort of thing you can turn into a link monster later on apart from i guess like underclock yeah yeah uh, exactly so that um you know that's that's really important like <laughs> not 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 dying in the mirror is quite good so <laughs> yeah. it's also both of them are also really, really good against 60 card. Um, okay. Yeah. If you make a uh, nightmare, then the whole like Mrs. Radiant like Scorpio play, they just can't do it. <laughs> yeah. You can, turn, you can turn like the Invoker face down, and that just if they haven't <laughs> just discarded suck. if they haven't discarded snow, that ends their turn. And if they've discarded snow, you've seen them discard snow, so you can turn yeah. down like the, the you can just turn down the Cobra. Yeah, and, and it's basically the same thing, and they can't play. Well, like they struggle yeah. to play because you can also turn the Seraphonite down as well. Yeah. So um, Nightmare is really good, and Dweller obviously. I will be Dweller in the deck at some point against like Draco, Draco, um, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to side it uh, because normally, unless you're weird and play an extra deck, <laughs> you <laughs> you're gonna know you're playing extra Draco like game one. Um, yeah, and if there's an opportunity to make Dweller, um, normally I just want to take it. So, so you'd, you'd rather make a Dweller than do the full combo then? Oh, no, 
I suppose, I suppose no, I wouldn't. Um, okay. Callum Hinchcliffe and I actually sat down and we did a few like sort of test runs, but basically he yeah. just draw um, a true Draco hand, and uh, I, we would just assume that I would zeroed in game one, yeah. and um, we just looked at the hands, and I think of them like half were unplayable uh, into <laughs> S zero. Three of them probably lost to S zero. It basically came down to could I put something else on the board and kill him next turn. Yeah. And there was like two hands that lost to it. That like lost that beat S zero, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So an eight out of ten success rate is pretty good. But it's like in case I get I don't know, unless you get like the really weird people like Ash it or um so you're playing in like uh, you can't do the full combo against 60 uh, because Dweller Nightmare against 60 is really, really strong. Um, so if you can get to that point, for example, like you might as well, like if if, if it stops your combo further on, you can't get to the later stages. You might as well. Yeah. Um, then I want to dwell on the deck list, and there's no real space in the side deck, so then we kept that in. The Utopia was yeah, because sure. Alfie helpfully pointed out to me as I was. Building my side deck on, well, build my extra on the Friday uh, that I probably need extra art masterpiece. <laughs> okay, uh, just, yeah. Obviously, it works with the Utopia Ball of Dragon because it's really like, it's like a Hail Mary. And yeah. if I can avoid playing Hail Marys, I'd rather, I'd rather avoid them. Because <laughs> Lightning is like so cheap to make in this deck, it's really just paying for some of my Yeah. So. That's why that was in there. And then Underclock okay. was eight eight cherries and the um, certain combos come up run out of link monsters. So it's just nice to have an extra link monster basically. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so with those then filled, that does mean that uh, you're kind of limited to just two electromites in the deck? Or is sometimes yeah. you see people playing three, so was that an issue or was that workable? Um, there were games where that's workable. Well, well, no, there were games where that wasn't workable. Um, yeah. Now, I remember playing against Zephra. Uh, it's really strange. Game two, he goes first and sets up three negates. Like, Vortex, Divine Strike, Jackal King. Like, three actual, real scary negates. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that game, I burned through the two Electromites and the Sad and Venom, and that made my life a little bit awkward. But, um, in, in general, it's not too big of an issue, and at least you sort of like blast everything out. Whether going first by you know locking your opponent out from the game, they were second yeah. by killing them. Um, yeah. So the deck isn't really designed to last more than say two turn cycles. So like my turn, my opponent's turn, my turn, my opponent's turn, yeah. or the other way around. Yeah. Um, because of that. It's not too big of an issue. Like, there are times where it comes up where the game is ten longer than you want to. But honestly, I'm tempted to rather play the second star than Venom because um, copying other stuff comes up sometimes as well. Yeah, sure. So if we move on to the side quickly, uh, so you didn't run any Call by the Grave in the side. Um, I think that's the major thing I, I took from no. this. Is, is that because you don't think it's necessary, or like, do you think it's not relevant enough? It's certainly relevant enough, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, if I get hand trapped, say, I don't know, like, Ash on Beatrice or whatever, that's like my go to yeah. example. Because um, that's one that generically hurts the most, it's, like, hurts the deck the most. Um, yeah. They have four cards left, they're going to draw to five next turn, and in this build, at that, well, at that point, I will have two level fours on board. Normally in this build, there is a way, like especially with the Shanky Magician, there are ways to get to Vortex and a rank 4. At that point you have a Negate and either Dweller or Nightmare. Yeah. Your opponent has 5 cards in hand. So, that's not that important, like that's not impossible for you to win at all. Like, in most situations you are probably going to win that. Um, okay. Yeah. Because Night Nightmare and Dweller sort of lock your opponent out of what most of what their deck wants to do anyway. Yeah. Um, so I didn't see Call of the Grave relevant in that sense. And also in Pendulum, uh, side cards are irritating anyway. 
um, because they're not pendulum monsters. Yeah. And, and you sort of just want to push through as much as possible. Yeah, like, I'd rather just be drawing a billion pendulum monsters, to be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah. There are already times where, like, sometimes you'll draw hands and you wish that the side card was a pendulum monster. Um, yeah. And I feel like Call of the Grave makes that problem worse just because it's not... You, you have to wait for your opponent to do something to then do something with Call to the Grave. Yeah. Whereas, like, the cards in my side deck, like, when Dragon of Rares, your opponent makes a board, uh, which they are always going to do the matchup you side it in for. You know, like, you side Ashes against SDK because you, you have to. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, like, Cosmic Cyclone, your opponents are going to set spells and traps. Like, the idea is that the cards that I side are 100% going to be relevant if I draw them in those yeah. matchups. Yeah. Whereas it's not, Call to the it's Grave... It's not dependent on your opponent making a decision, it's just, this is good. Instantly. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, it, it's... They, they're just... I know they're going to be good cards. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that pretty much summarizes, like, exactly why you wouldn't want to play it. Um, um, would you change any of this in the future? Like, we've seen some people playing Lava Golem instead of Ra and stuff. Uh, or do you think it's correct to play it like this? I'm not sure. Every card like performed. There wasn't a single card in the side deck that I did not side in uh, at some okay. point over the weekend. I sided them in multiple times as well. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I'm not saying I played against any FPK. But I, Ash came in regardless, you know, like Trickstar and whatnot. Yeah. Um, to stop reincarnations. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it evenly comes in Spirit Wars and comes in against Rogue constantly. Uh, anything that can <laughs> yeah. play out as well, I think I've, I've evenly the main four. Uh, yeah. Cyclones, was, uh, Cyclones are, like, similar, to be honest. Um, yeah. And obviously, like, Deep Barrage a blowout against Pendulum, for example, that, like, that always comes in going first. Uh, yeah. Drawing it. Even if they've drawn, like, the God Hand and Hand Trap, like, d Barry stops them and you win anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I don't think I would change this side deck. I'm pretty happy with the way it works right now. Okay, great. Um, oh, um, I just wanted to mention, um, yeah. side in three ofs as well, uh, instead of certain True Draco lists I have seen three <laughs> <laughs> Callum siding billions of ones and two ofs. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think you may be getting away with it in that deck you draw a billion cards, but like this list, this deck is like, you have to keep everything consistent. And I think these five cards are the best in their roles um, in terms of being uh, generically good yep. and good in the situations that I want them for um, compared to basically anything else. Okay, yeah. Cool, okay. Well, in which case, uh, I think you've pretty much covered the whole deck. Well, um, thanks very much for coming on. Um, no have you got any shout-outs that you'd like to make? Ooh, yes. Um, shout-outs to Alfie, Brad, and Tim, uh, who are Cabo with, and Vlad for having us. Thank you, Vlad. And Vlad putting up with <laughs> us as we were going to go to the airport, and he was very tired, was one of the <laughs> nicest things. <laughs> What have done for me in a while. Um, <laughs> so, thanks, Vlad. Um, shout out to like, all the Irish guys, like, like uh, you know, Luke Coogan, um, Cormac, they're all sound. Uh, I'm definitely yeah. going back. Um, and shout out to Christoph McCollum for drawing, for never drawing CP Lone Fires, <laughs> um, despite the fact that I gave him CP Lone Fires and a DTB. Um, <laughs> right. Oh, shout out to Callum for like helping me test the deck and stuff, and uh, Tom Nash for lending me the entire deck. All oh, right, yeah. um, that's always good. I am pretty sure of this main deck, uh, f at least thirty-four cards of it are Tom Nash's. <laughs> are they all the pendulum so, cards? But, yeah. <laughs> also, it's like <laughs> rank up six now as well. Um, all oh, right. So. <laughs> Shout out to basically be my sponsor for events. <laughs> Congratulations on getting fifth again. Um, it's a really solid list, and thank you for giving all the reasoning behind everything as well. It's like it's good to know, like the decisions that you made in every step of this sort of deck building process. No worries.
And uh, yeah, if you if you top again and you're interested in coming back on Top Deck, we'd be very happy to have you. Thank you. I'll uh, I'll make sure that I do top again. <laughs> it can't be that hard if I get to play back and see my opponent now. Thanks for watching this episode of Top Deck. If you have any comments or suggestions that you would like to make, leave them in the comment section down below. Check out the description for details of how you can get involved in this series. You can enter by a voice interview, or instead you could just send all of your information over Facebook Messenger, anything like that will be absolutely fine. If you want to see anything in particular from the upcoming series, then be sure to get in touch, and I'll see you guys in the next video.